Hey, what's up? It's Jesko again from AcousticsInsider.com, where I teach home studio acoustic treatment techniques for audio professionals, but without all the voodoo. So I came across this topic that I used to wonder about a lot as well, and that is if you can somehow combine the wall construction in your studio, the isolating structure, with your bass trapping. Like, can you build an isolating wall that also doubles as a bass trap in your studio. And I remember wondering this as well because I used to stumble across forum posts and pictures of people building their studios where they seem to be doing this. They seem to be building a wall construction but somehow leaving it open with the insulation material vi visible and then maybe covering it with fabric. And I used to wonder what is going on there exactly? Is there some something special going on there in terms of like resonance absorption with the drywall and then with the insulation material how does that all work and is it actually maybe the better way to build your studio so that's what i want to talk about in this video discuss what is actually going on there and if this is something that you should do so we're going to go through it step by step so you understand what exactly the individual components of a structure like this might be and how they work together. But before I do that, I wanna help you out in the process of treating your home studio. It can be so difficult to understand what exactly you should focus your energy on, what steps to actually take to get your room from empty to fully treated and translating your mixes. And so that's what my home studio treatment framework is about that you can download for free at the link in the description. These are my five steps to systematically treating a home studio and getting it to translate. It's very much a kind of a top level perspective to guide you through the process from start to finish so you understand what to focus on and what you can ignore. It's all in there, finding your listening position, setting up your speakers, working with pores absorption, working with resonance absorption, how to think and where measurements come into play, like with Rumi Q Wizard, for example, when and how it makes sense to tie in a subwoofer, but also smaller things like speaker decoupling. It's all in there nicely laid out for you in a step-by-step -step process so you know what it is you need to focus on at each step of building out your home studio. So again, if that's you, make sure you check out my home studio treatment framework at the link in the description. But with that, let's get back to this question of if you can actually combine the isolating wall structure with base trapping and if that makes sense. I used to think about this a lot as well. I used to get confused about it and now I have a definite answer. And unfortunately, the answer is no. And here's why. What you're trying to do with soundproofing or an isolating wall structure is trying to prevent sound transmission as much as possible. In fact, you're trying to get as much sound energy to be reflected back as possible. And the only way to do that properly, especially with low frequencies, is very heavy mass. Think concrete or double or triple layer drywall construction. So your typical insulation material that we use in acoustic treatment does form part of this process, but it's not directly responsible for absorbing sound that you don't want to leave the room. What you're trying to do is build a structure that reflects all that energy. You're not trying to absorb it, you're trying to contain it. So as a starting point, just for general understanding, let's have a look at this image that I took from the Master Handbook of Acoustics by Everest and Pullman. And this is really trying to show you different types of isolating wall structure and how well they work. But what I want to focus on is the one on the far right. That's the best performing one. So wall D in this particular example. And so this is obviously a cross section of a wall. And what we're seeing here are two separate stud work frames for your typical drywall construction. And they're separated by an air gap of about four to 10 inches. Each of the stud works is filled with insulation material. And then we've got double layer drywall on the outsides of each of these structures. Now, what gives the isolation, the soundproofing in this particular design is the fact that we have heavy mass, air, and then heavy mass again on the other side. That combination is what gives us the isolating properties. 
Now, if you build your entire room like this, so all the walls, maybe on a concrete floor and the seating as well, and you seal up the edges between these walls with kind of silicon sealant or something, you end up with an airtight structure with a very heavy mass as the walls. And that's what's going to give us that those isolating properties. That's now what I would consider an isolated room. Now, note in this thought experiment that there is no mineral wool, no insulation material actually visible from the inside of this room. It's all hidden inside the walls. All you're seeing is basically heavy duty, flat, reflective surface. So a room like this is very well isolated, soundproofed, but it has no acoustic treatment in it. It's going to sound like crap inside this room. So it's only now that we actually start thinking about the acoustic treatment from a conceptual point of view, right? So now all the standard stuff that I keep talking about on this channel apply. Finding your low-end sweet spot to place your listening position, porous absorber bass traps in the corners, reflection points, all that stuff, right? So that all happens separately once the actual isolating room is built. And that's why as acousticians, we separate these two tasks into separate planning stages. They require two very different approaches and use of the materials for their particular purpose. In fact, a lot of professionals actually really only do one or the other because they are so different in terms of their approaches and the expertise involved. Unfortunately, that also means for a lot of us studio owners, studio builders, when we're trying to do both isolation and acoustic treatment is that we need to hire separate professionals to do the job. There are few experts who do both. And more often than not, I see people coming to me with plans that they made with an acoustician who focuses on isolation techniques and they make very good plans, but then that's where the, the kind of the expertise and the help really stops. And they, if they were to build this room, they're basically left with a very well isolated but completely unusable music studio because it has zero acoustic treatment in it and actually still sounds like an empty concrete bunker. So now let's imagine that we're trying to combine acoustic treatment and isolation into a combined structure. Again, looking at this image of wall D, this cross section, essentially what we basically do is we remove the stud work on the right. We basically remove half of the isolation structure. And what we end up with is just one set of stud work framing with insulation material in it and drywall on one side. But as you can imagine, this seriously deteriorates the capability of the structure to actually stop noise transmitting through it because Remember, we what we wanted was mass, air, mass. And now we've removed two of these three components. We've removed one mass layer and we've removed the air gap. And so the isolating structure is basically only the drywall left on one side. On top of that, if we were to just use the structure like this and maybe close it off with fabric on the right side, we basically have a very thin layer of insulation material left to do the acoustic treatment. Typically what in like your typical drywall stud work, that's what, two to four inches, five to 10 centimeters of insulation material inside the framing. And that's not gonna give you any useful absorption in low end. We're only looking at mid and high frequency absorption with this kind of construction, but potentially over a huge surface because we're doing the entire wall like this, right? In this thought experiment, at least. So we end up with a structure that is neither particularly good at absorbing full spectrum because we're only absorbing mid to high frequencies from the acoustic treatment side perspective. And it's not good at isolation either because we've removed two thirds of the structure that are actually needed for the isolation to work. So coming back to why I said no at the beginning, this is why, right? These two concepts of isolation and acoustic treatment, to some extent even work against each other if you're trying to combine them in a single physical structure. And so that's also what I really want you to take away from this video, right? If you are planning 
the build out of your studio and you're thinking of some type of this combined structure, understand that if you want to do something like this, maybe for space saving purposes, because you're not willing to sacrifice the amount of space, you are also going to compromise both aspects of what you're trying to do. Yeah, you're not going to get good low end absorption. In fact, you're probably going to be on a path towards a pretty dead sounding room because that's what happens when you only absorb mid and high frequencies. That's kind of the psychoacoustics of what happens. And on top of that, you're not going to get any decent isolation either. So what you want to do is think of them as separate tasks and also plan accordingly. Just don't forget in that process that you actually need to do both, right? So for example, if you're calculating budgets, make sure you allocate enough to actually get decent results from both of them. All right, I hope that makes sense. I hope that clears up confusion about these kind of combined structures. They shouldn't exist. Don't do it. And with that, let's get back to learning to trust our ears and having fun making music in the studio. I'll see you in the next video.